you see, you won't be happy. You won't be rescued unless you know in your heart, trust and believe and experience the love of your God. That is what I need to give you to rescue you. I can rescue you in the crisis. You know, you're homeless at the minute. I'll stay with us until you get sorted out. Oh, you're upset at the minute. Here, love. Let me put my arm around you and you're okay. You've got others. You're not alone. Do you see, I can rescue you. But what you need ongoing is the assurance of the love of your God. That is what I, I need to be able to give to you. And then these crises, of course, will not happen. You won't need my particular attention. And you can enjoy um, just living. Because you have the love and care of your God. You can enjoy like me, simply coming to the rescue of those, being a neighbour to those who need it. Loving all, of course, because, well, increasingly you keep finding people who now think as you think, are always ready to rescue. You're living in a paradise where not only does God come to your rescue but all your fellow um, people do too we've got a heavenly host do you see the, the answer is uh, for, for, for fulfilment is to put God first in the sense of Loving God with all your heart, soul, mind and strength. Your God with all your heart, soul, mind and strength. And from this, this wealth, this infinite wealth, you are able to infinitely care for all. Do you see the need for marriage to an individual excluding all other relationships vanishes? The need's gone. Because hmm. you're no longer in that sort of universe that has such a need. So if you love others as yourself, you want them to have what you have. What do you have? You have this amazing relationship with God. And if they have that, they'll be as happy as you and able to be as much of a blessing as you. Namely, you're always ready to come to the rescue of those in crisis. But it's not actually meeting their crisis that's going to do it. Because they will have other crises unless they're doing what? Unless they've received their God as their God and love with all their heart, soul, mind and strength. Then they will be as free as you to be free to help. So you help them in crisis because this will enable them to pass the crisis and continue to have the opportunity to come to love their God. And they will love us to bits, of course, because in gratitude we rescued them when they needed it. And finally they will choose, too, to love their God and not have the crises therefore, of course. They become adults like you in the kingdom of heaven. 
And there'll be many around us, children, who have not learnt this yet, and are in crisis. And we as a loving parent meets them in the crisis and then lets them go off to play. And when they fall over and hurt themselves, we pick them up, clean them up, give them a meal, give them sleep and rest, and then there's a new day tomorrow. And they go out and play again until they learn like you have learnt the first commandment, the first principle to love their God with all their heart, soul, mind and strength. And they stop falling over. They become adults like us. <laughs> Thank you, Dad. Now, of course, the miraculous has taken place. I come across someone who has these same values as me. To love their God with all their heart, soul, mind and strength. And to rescue others in the transitory, yes, with various needs of support and help. And let me help you find a job or whatever it is, you know, or find a house or find a partner like you. But really, I've now found a partner that has the same colour as me, namely wants you to know and love your God with all your heart, soul and mind and strength. And she or he, you know, I mean, whatever the partner is, your friend even. It doesn't have to be called a marriage, it's good friends that are bonded in this way. They have a unity of purpose in that their appreciation is really to rescue others into life eternal, that they may become adults. In other words, the two of you are united in wanting all those around you to mature into wonderful adult persons in the kingdom of heaven. And therefore you now as a married couple rescue others but your rescue is you know in your heart not just each other but God in other words you're both anchored to your God and that's what allows you a permanent relationship with each other Mm. Now, this relationship with each other is very important to you because it's the epitome of what you want for all. But you guard it. And the guarding of it excludes certain help to others. Mm, seems to make limited help, doesn't it? Look, it's really rather simple, isn't it? It occurs to me. A family is not made up of Or is it relationships between couples? Can be. The extended family has couples within the family. It's recognized that and friendships within the family, two of the sisters get on very well. One of the brothers and the sisters gets on extremely well. They tend to be always in each other's company and playing together. 
Hmm. That's interesting, isn't it? Let me think about this a minute. What would make it then a good family? Well, that they have this relationship, but they have a common overarching relationship, which is they have the same parents. And therefore, they are much concerned with each other's welfare beyond their nuclear group, if you like, within the family, to the whole family. Thank you, Dad. But we get in these um, quandaries, not sure what the outcome is. But it's really very simple. We come back to the individual should love his God, her God, with all their heart, soul, mind, and strength. And you leave the structure to sort itself out. So it's not that I come to you working out my relationship to you. I come to you already sold out to God, if you like. That's who I am. And if that's who you are, then we will relate accordingly. The rest is noise. I'll rescue you and all others in the same way. We may be walking together, we may not. I'm not sure about that, I think. There'll be this incredible bond of gratitude between us because you have been such a blessing to me. And I to you. And there'll be other bonds to, to others who are like-minded. Oh my goodness, I can't tell you what the structure will be. All I can tell you is what I believe is the right principle and it's to love God, your God, with all your heart, soul, mind and strength and then just see what he does with it. But ever return to that, that you're going to love your God with all your heart, soul, mind and strength. And sure, you know your God is concerned for all that he's made and loved. I suspect that is your God. I think that's mine. And I leave him to sort out the details of what structures might appear to be. In other words, I'm not clear what law there will be. Law is for those who don't know God. Those who know God are living accordingly. <laughs> that sounds very profound, Marshall. <laughs> Love you, Dad. <laughs>